What is the connection between a copper coffee pot and your startup? Well, the oldest company sure is thought to be that of a copper mine from 1288, and the London Stock Exchange started in the London coffee shops over 300 years ago. The world has changed a lot in the meantime, but some things have stayed the same. Let's start with the basics. A company is a separate entity with its own legal body. We divide this company into separate amount and call these shares. A company can have any number of shares. It can be anything from one share, say a single person consultancy owned by the consultant, through to several million shares such as a multinational. These shares can be bought and sold. A place where shares are bought and sold is known as a stock exchange. Any share that can be sold or bought on a stock exchange is known as a public share, as in members of the public can buy them. Other shares are called private shares, as they can only be sold privately. Now, the journey from creation all the way through to a public share has several stages. You will often hear this called the funding escalator. This is a common simplified analogy. Unlike many things, real life has special cases, but here we'll ignore them for simplicity's sake. The first step is that you have created your company and your pre-product, pre-customers and ready to go. Your costs will be low, your future bright and optimistic. We call this stage bootstrapping. Normally the one thing you do not have is money. There are three people who you can ask for support. These are the founders, family and friends. As the founder, you're probably paying yourself less than you're worth and using your own cash to pay staff and external suppliers. You can also ask your family and friends to support you. And many investors see the ability to get close friends and family to support you as a good sign that you are genuine. Some people joke that there is a fourth F called fools who will back you at this stage. Generally speaking, using this money, you will explore what the product is, who are the customers and what they want. With this information, you're ready for the next stage, the angel investors. Business angels, also called private seed or informal investors, will generally be the first money that is more formally taken. They will want legal paperwork, a process of sanity checking called due diligence or just DD, and are generally more probing in nature than friends or family. Angel money is used to complete the product and take it to market. The next stage is much more formal investment, the venture capital and corporate capital. These people are investing other people's money. It might be long-term money from an insurance company or the retained profits from a large company. Finally, the last step is to convert the investment and return money to the investors. This is done by either selling to one company known as a trade sale or to many shareholders via an initial public offering or IPO. Let's look at this in more detail. I will concentrate on the angels onwards as you should have a better understanding of who your friends and family are than me. The angel. These generally are people who've had a successful career and they're looking to invest some of their personal wealth into other investments. Because they're investing into early stage companies and it is risky, the law in the UK requires them to only invest in companies underneath certain conditions. These rules do change from time to time and I'm not going to give legal advice but the company has to make sure that they and the investors comply with the relevant rules. Angels tend, and I do not mean all by any stretch, but tend to be late middle aged and older. Because they're successful, they understand risk and are prepared to consider investments that the more formal organisations won't undertake. They reduce the risk by using their experience to solve the problems and spread their investments with other angels. This is known as syndication. To encourage angels to invest in these high-risk companies, the UK government offers tax breaks. We won't go into great detail here, and the rules change, but investigate the Seed Enterprise Investment Scheme, Enterprise Investment Scheme, Social Investment Tax Relief, and Venture Capital Trust. Let's look at the venture capital, the VCs. The VCs invest other people's money, unlike angels who invest their own. The money and the companies will be managed with a process so that the VC can demonstrate to their funders that they are making and have made good use of the money trusted to them. Let's start with a simplified overview of how a VC works. Most, but not all VCs, have money given to them for a period of time, often 10 years. At the start of this period, a large cash holder, 
perhaps an insurance company looking to invest insurance premiums will buy into the VC fund. The VC will invest that in various companies and at the end of the 10 years, the assets of the fund will be converted back to cash and the profit will be shared with the original cash supplier, that is the insurance company in this case, and the fund managers. What does this mean for you? It means you need to see if the fund is still investing into new opportunities. Just ask them, are you still making investments? Some VCs invest the money they make back into the pool of money that they have been asked to manage. This is known as an evergreen fund. They have no end date. Often they are started with public or government money to meet certain strategic aims. With all VCs, get to understand the aims that they have promised to the people who invested their money with them. This will drive all their investment decisions. Moving on to corporate venturing, this is similar to VCs, except the money comes from a large company. So the investment decisions tend to consider how can the startup help the parent more than a simple cash return on investment. Corporate venturing can be done in a number of ways. Some companies treat the money at arm's length, essentially as a venture capital company, complete with a typical 10 year time limit. Others treat it as an internal operation with the investment seen as part of the balance sheet. The latter do not have the 10 year aspect to the fund. So as long as you are supporting the corporate strategic objectives, they are unlikely to sell or disinvest you. As you go on this investment journey, you may hear phrases such as series A, B and C. Each of these has a specific aim. These are series A, used to develop the product and fund the first customer use or move it into new markets. Series B, used to build the company. Most money will be going into non-technical elements such as sales and marketing. Series C, scale up, really pushing the growth boundaries. Another phrase you might hear is convertible loan. This is covered in more detail in Charlotte's video on loans. After all this money has been invested, at some point, the investors will need to be rewarded. This is the exit, and I have another video that explains this in more detail. I am often asked, how can I find investors? I'm going to concentrate on the early stage investors because this is where you'll learn the key lessons. The first main way is good old fashioned personal contacts. Ask other entrepreneurs who invested in them and then ask for warm introductions. LinkedIn has helped to transform this process. Similarly, expect LinkedIn to be used in the due diligence process on you and your company. Sometimes I get phone calls from potential investors asking for my informal thoughts on the people that I am connected to. Another source of warm introductions are the various networks made up from accelerators, incubators, and the innovation networks, such as ourselves, the Knowledge Transfer Network, Enterprise Europe Network, and the Catapult Network. See what events they're organizing and be ready to network hard. I know some early stage founders bring in a chief operating officer to look after the day-to-day -day running of a company while they concentrate on the fundraising. You might need to consider such a thing. A little health warning. Do be careful about the laws regarding the promotion of investments. In the UK, this would be the Financial Services and Market Act 2000. It's easy to stay within the law, but you do need to know what is required. Do not let your enthusiasm innocently get you into trouble. Finally, fundraising will feel hard. It will take energy and time, and you're likely to hear many no's along the way. It's a process of learning, and hard work often yields results. Good luck. I hope you find your investor.